السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الذي لا إله سواه والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف وأخلص وأكرم أنبياء الله سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله الطاهرين وأصحابه الميامين والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم آمين اللهم افتح مسامع قلوبنا لذكرك والله please open the hearing channels of our hearts to that which reminds us of you اللهم وفقنا لإثمام صيام وقيام شهر رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا يا الله please help us complete the fasting and the praying during this month with faith, iman, and with ihtisab, with a desire of reward from you. Ameen. Remember, my dear brothers and sisters, those of you who are attending these uh, many nights of this khatira, that the, uh, the essential theme of this khatira from the beginning was about the concept in the ayah of the Qur'an, in the beginning of the Qur'an, which sets the tone for the rest of the Qur'an. As Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels, I am going to set on earth a khalifa, a steward, a vice gerent or representative. And that as we were <coughs> delving, <coughs> excuse me, into more of the details of that, the essence of Khilafah on earth is that we human beings, especially those who claim to be Muslim and love the divine, to represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at our best possible human level, to represent Him in, in His attributes, and therefore in our akhlaq, in our character. That Allah Azza wa Jal is Rahim, is lovingly merciful. In order to be representatives of the Divine, we must be adorned with the character of Rahmah, of merciful love ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Halim, very forbearing, very patient and let go and does not respond in ways that are just and swift, but in ways that are very wise and patient and kind on average. And he is Halim, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, that we represent him, we must develop the character of Hilm, of forbearance. Yes, Allah is Alim, is all-knowing, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the infinite sense of that um, character or that quality of knowing in order to be uh, those who represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth uh, to the best of our possibility we also must be people of ilm and seek knowledge God subhanahu wa ta'ala is not known and is not worshipped with ignorance so we need to have ilm as well God subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is just Allah is benevolent Allah is Hakim, Allah is Sabur. All of these qualities, in order to be Khalifa of Allah on earth, we need to ourselves embody those characteristics at our best possible human level. And that means as we live, as we navigate in this life, at all levels of life, at school, at home, at work, in the masjid, in the streets, in prosperity, in adversity, politically, economically, at all levels, morally, spiritually, we are to embody those akhlaq, those traits and those characteristics in order to fulfill the purpose for which we were created practically, namely to represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in nija'ilun fil ardi, Khalifa. And we kept on mentioning many simple, however very important things in this context. And I hope some of you remember 
some of those and are striving to practice them. Of the first important things we mentioned was as salah as salah As Allah Azza wa Jal says in the context of having talked to us about the Khilafah on earth, and I mentioned to you how that came about, He subhanahu wa ta'ala says to those whom He addressed and therefore to all of us, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ And help yourselves with patience, endurance, and prayer, and salah. إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Salah is the means by which we seek support and strength and energy spiritually to deal with all matters in this dunya. The difficult matters and the simple matters, the religious matters and the mundane matters. We need strength, we need energy to do things and to uh, face challenges and to make good use of opportunities. We need the right type of energy and that we summon in Salah. A salah is a means of istimdad, a means by which we, um, alhamdulillah, we, we develop and we seek that, uh, 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 that influx from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that, and that help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his, of his rahmah. And therefore we spoke of al khushu'a fi salah. Salah, our salah must be, must be taking care very, very specially. We must develop khushu' in our salah, that presence of our heart, that stillness inside of us in order to benefit from salah. So that when we are in khushu' in salah, it helps us be in khushu' outside of salah. And we learn that in order also to be khushu' in salah, in salah, we need to be in khushu' outside salah. So it's a concept of a feedback loop. A feedback loop. Salah gives us energy for outside of Salah. And what we do outside of Salah also identifies what we are inside of Salah. If outside of Salah my life is a life of debauchery, a life of lying, a life of backbiting, a life of cheating, a life of lying, a life of, a life of killing, of usurping, a life an immoral life where I indulge excessively and immorally and unjustly my senses and my feelings and I don't care, then when I come to Salah, if I come to Salah, that simply will be reflected in my Salah and it haunts me. That's why I can never be in Khushu' in Salah. If outside of Salah, I'm a person who, whose focus and the lens by which he or she sees the world is very selfish, very self-oriented, not divine. al khushu' of salah And then we spoke of many other things of which we were speaking last even of their, those characters such as forgiveness, such as pardoning. وَالَّذِينَ يَجْتَنِبُونَ كَبَائِرَ الْإِثْمِ وَالْفَوَاحِشَ وَمَا رَزَقْيَاهُمْ رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Again, وَالَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِرَبِّهِمْ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورًا عَلَيْنَهُمْ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا مَا غَضِبُوا هُمْ يَغْفِرُونَ And we uh, spoke about that in, in, in some ways whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes those who when they are angry and angered they forgive when they are able to, when they have the upper hand, then when it comes to their personal rights that they choose to forgive instead of taking revenge and taking their justice. And we spoke most importantly that that we need to exemplify and to practice first where? First where? At home and at work employee employer relationships and in the masjid and in the street when we play when we are serious to practice that and we gave examples of how that was practiced by rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and by those who truly emulate rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in their lives
How many of you know Surah Al-Ikhlas? Raise your hands. There are some who don't know Surah Al-Ikhlas? <laughs> I, I, I saw that some hands were not raised. And that was maybe out of uh, humbleness. And yet it is, subhanAllah, it is a, a magnificent, a magnificent surah by the grace of Allah Azawajal. And because, as you know, my dear brothers and sisters, sometimes we are not properly focused. Uh, um, we forget what we know. We forget what we have. We forget the seriousness or the grandeur of a situation in which we are because we're busy with other things. And Surah Al-Ikhlas is very, you know, I don't want to say the word short. You know, I am short, not the Surah is short. Uh, you know, you, you never call a Surah of the Qur'an, you never call a Surah of the Qur'an a small Surah or a short Surah. One has said that and he said, somebody told him, you're small, you're short, not the Surah. So to choose a word that is... Um, acceptable to describe that it doesn't have many ayat in it. It is, it is brief, thank you. Better word is brief. It is, it is brief. What else? No, in English. <laughs> it, it is brief, subhanAllah. And yet, uh, what it has in it by the grace of Allah Azawajal, is enormous of grace and favor. It suffices, as most of you know or should know, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it has the value of the third of the Qur'an. It has the value of the third of the Qur'an. Surat al-Ikhlas. And that's why many ulama from our early predecessors as well you know, even when they finished, re they finished reading the Qur'an, all of it, they read, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ three times. After reading all the Qur'an, then they read, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ three times. It's like, inshallah, by the grace of Allah and the bountiful, merciful uh, giving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as though they would have read the entire Qur'an. Three-third. Three times one third equals one. Subhanallah. How many of us regularly read three times Surah Al-Ikhlas? And yet Rasulullah sallallahu assigned even as a word to read it three times. Every morning and every late afternoon. After Fajr and after Asr or after Maghrib. To read it three times with that in knowledge and asking the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of it because it contains the very beautiful, clear notion of the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ikhlas, which ikhlas and tawheed sometimes are used interchangeably. Uh, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ikhlas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of you don't know I'm going to say, don't know, forgive me to say that, and some may know. A principle, I'm going to mention it before I mention something else about Qul Huwa Allah Ahad. Many of you, when a hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned, some have taught you, or you have read somewhere, that when the hadith is not authentic, such as weak, disregard it. It has no value. That's utterly false even if you read it in books or if you Google it in your Googling systems. That's utterly false. And those who said that, and there are those who said that, some called scholars, and in that all respectfully, they are wrong. The details are too many to elaborate here upon juristically. They are dead wrong. <coughs> A hadith ba'if, as long as it is not mawdu'ah, as long as it is not spurious, is not rejected. And the statements of the Imam, the likes of Abu Hanifa, of Shafi'i, of Malik, of the Imam Ahmad especially, 
and of the later scholars like Imam al Nawawi, Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, and the late Al Haytami, Al Suyuti. All of these galaxies of scholars have never rejected the weak hadith. There are conditions when it is set aside. There are conditions when it is set aside, not totally and absolutely set aside as though it were spurious, it were mawdu'a. And one rule is well established amongst the, the ijma' of the expert scholars, as Imam al-Nawawi would say, rahimahullah ta'ala, at least in this case, there are other things to talk about, in the case of fadailul amal in the case especially of virtues and moral merits and spiritual merits that the hadith of Da'if is used and is applicable and is applied as long as there is no other stronger text that opposes that meaning that opposes that meaning and if there isn't then it is practical it is practiced and it is applied and that's a very, very important rule. So whenever you go and see and read hadith ba'if, weak hadith, don't, it doesn't mean disregard it. The scholars have ways by which to deal with the weak hadith in general, as I told you, and a lot more than that, inshallah ta'ala. Because of that, there is a text that is considered weak by scholars, rahimahullah ta'ala, yet, applied by them practically. And it is about قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ in a very special way. In a very special way. Said Rasulullah wasallam in accordance to that text, which is considered weak by some ulama, yet applied, and it is applicable here. He said wasallam in accordance to that, مَنْ جَاءَ بِثَلَاثَةٍ دخل من أي أبواب الجنة الثمانية شاء whosoever comes with three qualities will enter the will enter paradise from any of the gates of paradise he or she wishes what are those three he said صلى الله عليه وسلم he mentioned three of them من يعفو عن قاتله من يعفو عن قاتله ومن أدى دينا خفيا وفي رواية أمانة خفية thirdly ومن قرأ دبر كل صلاة قل هو الله أحد سيدنا in that text سيدنا أبو بكر رضي الله تعالى عنه in the text, in the course of the text, Allah Alam asks, Ya Rasulullah, Aw ihdahunna, Aw ihdahunna, Faqala, Aw ihdahunna. Did I say Ashwan Ghat? No, I didn't. The, the one who reads, Qul huwa Allah Ahad, ten times, I thought I said ten times, I'm sorry. The one who reads, Qul huwa Allah Ahad, after every salah, ten times. So Sayyiduna Abu Bakr said, Ya Rasulullah, or if the person does one of them, he says, or one of them. What are these three? First of all, subhanAllah, in the context of what we were talking about last night as well, the person who pardons and forgives his killer. SubhanAllah. The person who forgives his killer. What does this mean, the ulama say? Meaning that the person was attacked, was, was um, you know, violently uh, um, assaulted. And before he died, he or she forgave the killer and died. SubhanAllah. This person, this mu'min, would enter Jannah in accordance to this text from any of the gates of Jannah he or she wishes. This is too difficult for me. I don't know about you. May you never be in that situation, inshallah. May you never be in that situation, inshallah. 
May we all and may you die in a way that is very beautiful and peaceful in dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, the person who delivers a trust entrusted while there is no witness for that transaction. In other words, somebody entrusted you with something well for something very important. And there was no witness and no recording of it. In other words, the person could have what? Taken it and never returned it and there is no evidence. And yet the person did so, apparently this should have been very important uh, type of, of, of trust, and he or she delivers that trust out of fear from Allah and consciousness of Allah Azza wa alone. This person enters Jannah from any of the gates she or he wishes. And thirdly, the one that we wanted to address for the reason of Allah Allah had, and the person who regularly recites after every obligatory salah, Recites ten times, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ Easy, isn't it? But it is easy only for those for whom Allah makes it easy. يَسِرٌ عَلَى مِنْ يَسَّرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ Who will do that regularly, always? May we be of those. May you be of those, inshaAllah ta'ala. May we be of those, insha'Allah ta'ala. Ya Rabbi Ameen, Ya Rabbi Ameen. Surah Al-Ikhlas is very brief, but because of what it contains, and the, um, and the um, specialness of the Tawheedi content of the active affirmation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's oneness that is in it, Allah, by His grace, made it so, so special. So if you want to perform Qiyam al-Layl and you don't know much Qur'an, but somebody will tell you, but you know all of the Qur'an. How? Three times, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ So you read in your Qiyam, keep repeating, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ Keep repeating, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ And do that as often as you can. Because Allah loves that. Many of you know of another hadith which is technically authentic when a person used in every salah he prayed, he used to recite at the end, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ Even as an imam. Then the ma'mumin in the time of Rasulullah those who prayed behind him, you know, brought this news to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They found it a little bit strange that this is what he does regularly. He said, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He asked him, "Why do you do that?" He said, "Inni uhibbuha ya Rasulullah. Ya Rasulullah, I very love. I verily love. I have hub love for this surah." He says to him, "What did he say?" For your hub for that, Allah has entered your Jannah. For your hub love for the, that surah, Allah has entered your Jannah. And it is Qulu Allah Ahad. Look how much, many, many, many ways Allah offers us so easily and simply, so many, many, many ways to enter Jannah. And yet, so many, 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 many of us ignore that so many, 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 many times. May Allah forgive us. May Allah help us. May Allah guard our hearts. May Allah in this night, Ya Rabbi, may He in this night not ever disappoint us. Nay, may we say better, may we not disappoint Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
تعالى الله عن ذلك علوا كبيرا and may he subhanahu wa ta'ala as Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم advised us to implore him during this night or a night like this that he grant us al-'afwu that he grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins and that he rectifies us in the way he rectifies his nearest and most purest and the purest of his servants ya rabbal alamin allahumma innaka 'afuwun tuhibbu al-'afwa fa'fu 'anna allahumma innaka 'afuwun tuhibbu al-'afwa fa'fu 'anna allahumma innaka 'afuwun tuhibbu al-'afwa fa'fu 'anna my dear brothers and sisters let's do even more than what we used to do before of our best during this night in clearing our hearts in clearing our minds in clearing our thoughts our feelings and in summoning more honesty and sincerity and innocence in our uh, in our relationship with Allah and in our salah and in our dua that he may subhanahu wa ta'ala shower upon us of his um, uh, of his uh, uh, bountiful loving mercy amin wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa maulana muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر